Hi, I'm Walt Bartman. I'm the founder and director of the Old Barn Studio at Glen Echo, and I teach landscape painting classes, figure classes, and uh, mostly on location. What I'm going to do today is talk a little bit about greens and how to mix greens and what are my favorite greens. I know that uh, when you look at the artists and you look down through their portfolios, you're going to see a lot of different ways that artists mix greens. And I feel that, uh, you know, there's some things to really get to know about greens. So I'm going to help you here to understand it. One of my first favorite greens is mixing just black and yellow uh, or black and red or black and orange to make green. So I've got a couple blacks at the top and I've got the, um, uh, you know, the yellows on the right. So what I'm going to do right now is just put out some white and I'm going to um, start to mix a little bit, all right? And one of the things that's very important about mixing is just to understand that, it, you know, we mix white with a color, we're going to make gray, all right? So that's, that's really important. And depending upon the, the black that you're using, all right, you can see that this gray that I just put down is a cool gray, all right? And the other black is going to be a little different, all right? Uh, one, it's a, this is a uh, ivory black, and this is a, um, a, um, a blue black. And you'll see that you'll see the difference in there, even in the same value, you'll see that one is, is cooler and one is warmer. So I think that the, the key to using black is what black do you use on your palette, all right? And each one of these blacks will mix differently with uh, the yellow uh, that we're going to put out. So I'm just going to take a little bit of yellow and I'm going to put it out here. And I'm going to show you that we can make a, a, a pretty nice green just by mixing black and, um, and yellow together. And we're going to get a wonderful green that's here. All right. And that green uh, is very much like um, cadmium green light. All right, and we all we did was take uh, uh, this is a, a kind of a nickel yellow and uh, a blue black by Holbein, and the nickel yellow uh, essentially is old Holland. All right, uh, has a Dutch name to it, but it'll give you an idea of what it is to take that yellow and just mix it with uh, a gray. Okay, and sometimes people don't realize that. Hey, you can mix yellow with gray and get a, uh, a, a color, a green as well. All right. So I think that the um, that what you're seeing here is uh, me just adding more yellow, just up up to value. But you can see the difference in the two, two the two greens now. All right. And I think that the uh, interesting thing about that is that if I was going to paint any kind of foliage, all right, I would be thinking about the. Um, the yellow or the orange that I would be dealing with in making a, um, a another uh, color of green. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this blue, mix it into the uh, into the orange, and you're going to see uh, with a little bit more orange that we're going to get a color that uh, that looks like um, you know uh, like a darker orange. But when we put it next to the green. All right, we're going to see that that, uh, that orange really takes on a property of being another green. And I think that this is one of the things that I, I want you to recognize about mixing black and orange together is that when we do that, okay, the color that we put next to this reads, reads as a green as well. And I think the, um, and of course, if you mix, uh, a touch, of, a touch more black into it, you're going to get something that uh, is a, a kind of a darker green, all right? And uh, just keep this, keep this in mind because I do a lot of mixing where when I'm painting something that I call um, like a green tree, I'm going to think in these terms, all right? That's one of the, that's one of the first things that I, I do is think in terms of using a yellow, a yellow black, and then an orange black. And, uh, and again, that will read, uh, depending upon what you put next to it, as a green, okay? And then the last one is a red black. And I think that transition of going from, um, uh, and we're gonna mix them in here, all right? And if I mix white, by the way, with it, 
it changes the it changes the color. All right, it actually makes it more uh, relate to the color next to it. So I think that this is one of the one of the important things to to realize about mixing these uh, this combination together: the black and red, the, the black and um, uh, orange, and the black and yellow. Is that you get um, you know you get greens. If I want a, a little bit more of a green, I'll put more yellow into the orange. All right, and that will make a uh, an interesting green. Much more. It's funny, but just adding a little yellow makes it uh, closer to being uh, what we would consider a green color. All right, and uh, also in the other one as well. And you're going to see because this is blue black that the more yellow that we mix into it. The greener it becomes. So you're seeing right now, you're seeing a nice combination here, all right, of the of the three uh, colors. And if you were to um, say, okay, I'm going to paint a you know a tree, all right, uh, and I needed to um, make some greens, I could just take my yellow, uh, orange, and red and mix it with black, okay, with a little bit of white. And you can see how wonderful those greens work against each other. And you're going to say, well, the, the one on the right looks like a, an orange. Well, it does, but it's essentially green is the intermediary color and it can go in any direction. So if we were to mix these two together as a transition, you could see that we would be mixing a, a very interesting green that uh, would work with the one that's there already. Okay, so I think that this is one of the things to keep in mind, right? But certain, uh, you know, depending upon the, uh, the, the the warmth and coolness of the color that you're mixing, all right, especially the black. This is one of the things that I think probably uh, is the uh, not understood as well is that the black that you have, depending upon it, whether it's a warm or a cool black, will uh, mix differently with the uh, with the colors. But I just put the two out here. This is ivory black. So we're gonna take a look at the ivory black and mix it with the yellow, all right? And see what kind of, see what kind of green we get, all right? And you're gonna see that that right away uh, almost looks like a viridian, all right? And uh, honestly, uh, that's one of the, the keys to black and yellow is that the color can look like a viridian green. All right, so I think that that's one of the important parts to understand here. But what's also important is the more yellow we mix in it, all right, the lighter it becomes, the warmer it becomes, and it, it transitions into another type of green. And we're going to watch that here in a second, all right, as I put more yellow into this. And you're going to see that it gets lighter as we're mixing it, okay? So um, you can see the transition of the two greens next to one another. And depending upon how light we wanted to make that green, all right, and this is, this is just black and yellow, all right, and the black is ivory black. The blue black does a, a something different, all right? So here we're just going to use just a touch of black. And now you see the three greens that we made here. All right, they're getting warmer, they're getting lighter, okay? And, uh, and, and actually, uh, this one becomes the warm green. So I'll tell you, you can do a lot with this in just mixing greens. You can see what I have here in transition. There are three different colors right now, okay, of green. And I think that it's all just a matter of the amount of yellow and black mixed together. And as I said, if we were to mix some orange into this, all right, we're going to make a, a different kind of green. All right, it's going to be, a, a, you know, have a nice warm orange quality to it. All right. And again, the amount of yellow that we put in it and the amount of black will determine the, uh, the orange and the kind of color that we're going to have that we could put up against the one that's already there. All right, and you can see that. So what I want you to do is keep in mind that you can go um, black and yellow, black and orange, and black and red, all right? And if you were painting a tree, you would see that 
uh, you would have these uh, combinations next to one another. Okay, so I think that you see that, all right? The other thing that's really important about mixing is understanding that the more white that you mix with a color, all right, the lighter it becomes and it changes in color, all right? So this black, you can see is turning, this is an ivory black, turning into a gray, but more of a blue gray, okay? And as we add more white to it, all right, it gets, it, it almost takes on a warmer, feel even though we haven't done anything but add white to it and in the mixing all right i'm going to tell you in the mixing you really really want to learn how to do this because it's it's the kind of thing where when we compare colors or values all right we can see the uh the way these are working all right so i think that's that's the main thing now now i'm going to just talk a little bit about uh mixing blue with uh uh, with the black or with yellow and orange, all right. And this is the blue that I have. This is a sort of a manganese blue, all right, and uh, or cerulean, okay. And it's on the warm side. So when we mix white with it, we can see the kind of color that it that it is by the amount of white that we put next to it, okay, and how we've changed that color already, okay. So. The, the thing that I want you to understand about mixing is that if I'm going to use yellow, okay, and we're going to use, we're using right now a kind of nickel yellow, so it's more on the green side, but you can see with, that just with a little bit of yellow, the kind of green that we're making, all right? And if I was to compare the green that I have here to all my other greens, all right, I, I would say to you, um, you know, just to understand that uh, in the way that that green is being mixed. All right. Because this is all, these are all greens right now. All right. And with a little bit more white, that, that color even changes dramatically more. So don't always think that you have to mix a color into another color to make the color change color. You can mix white with the color and that will do it too. Now, one of the things that we have that I think is very, very important about mixing, mixing color, all right, is that we haven't talked so much about the other yellows. I'm going to take what's called the Lizarin Yellow by uh, Holbein, or not in Holbein, uh, Williamsburg, all right? And I'm going to, and this, by the way, is my favorite yellow, all right? Because it looks like a, it looks like a, a, a kind of an ochre, all right? But when we mix white with that yellow, all right, it explodes with um, with yellow. All right, and you can kind of see that that yellow combination there is so different from the yellow that we just had. All right, and I think that the um, interesting thing about this color, by the way, is that if I mix it with a green, all right, it doesn't always make the green lighter. All right, so. This is, this is one of the interesting properties about this. If I mix some green in here, it doesn't make that green lighter. Matter of fact, it makes that green darker. And so that's the property of that alizarin yellow. So knowing that is real important in mixing your greens because um, there are certain colors that when you think that you're adding a, a color that might make it lighter, all right, it actually is making it darker. So I think that uh, we're seeing me using a kind of an ochre or alizarin yellow compared to a uh, cadmium yellow or nickel yellow, all right, uh, depending upon how warm we want the yellows to be. But look at all these beautiful greens that I've mixed, all right. So, you know, one of the, one of the keys, too, is that when you do mix, uh, like this is ultramarine blue, okay, and you mix uh, a little bit of white with it, obviously you're going to see how it uh, vibrates uh, light as well, okay? But one of the interesting things about ultramarine is that, hey, that same color that we used earlier, all right, is a totally different, uh, totally different uh, color uh, of green based upon the fact that it's a different blue, all right? So I think that the, um, this also is, is really important because of the fact that you start realizing that all these different yellows uh, mixed with the blues are going to make different colors. Now, I've got a turquoise green, 
All right. What do you do with a turquoise spring? All right. I'm going to try and uh, move that a little bit so you can see it. All right. Well, what do you do with a turquoise spring? Well, we can mix yellow with that one too. All right. And, um, you know, and when we do, we're going to see a, a, a more of a almost a, a, um, a cadmium green light. All right. Uh, depending upon the yellow and, of course, uh, the um, the mixing of the, uh, uh, the, the turquoise in it. All right. So what happens if we use orange, though? What if we use orange with this turquoise green? All right. I think the thing that we start to recognize about that is, hey, this is kind of an interesting green too, all right? And you're going to say, uh, it, is it really a green, all right? Well, by itself, it doesn't look like a green until you put it next to something that is green, all right? And uh, all of a sudden, it takes on the properties of that particular color. But you can see that this, this one, now the orange always makes the greens duller, whereas the yellows tend to make the greens more vibrant, okay? And I think that the, you know, again, the red is, as well. I don't want you to think that I wouldn't think to use red to make a green, all right? And especially a turquoise green, uh, when we mix that together, we're going to get a color that almost looks like a violet. But it's going to be on the it's going to be on the green side, all right. And next to this green, that's a beautiful combination, all right. So uh, again, it's using the the one uh, turquoise, mixing yellow into it, mixing red into it, mixing orange into it. And I'm a firm believer that in order to make your greens, you want to do something like that. And just keep in mind that the more we add white to anything, all right the duller it becomes, the lighter it becomes. In, in the case of most colors, the more white we add, it will continue to get brighter until you get to a certain point. And then that, that color gets totally dull. And this is one of the things about mixing white into a color is to watch how much white you can mix in before it completely loses its charm, okay? So I think that that's uh, uh, where we are with that. Now, if I was using these colors to, to mix, to, um, uh, you know, to show people how to paint a, a tree, okay, I want you to understand something about what I've done here. The key to painting trees is not necessarily to paint uh, the, uh, the color, okay? I'm going to try and just give you an idea of what I'm talking about. But the, the, the key here is that most of what we see with trees, they're not really that light. They're a medium tone value, all right? So, you know, when we do mix our yellow, I'm gonna use a brush right now, okay? And we do mix the, um, uh, either the black or whatever, there's some beautiful colors made with the black. Okay, I'm gonna use a turquoise, all right? But that would be your, um, that's a, sort of a medium tone value. And you, you know, you have to read the saturation. Certainly the more white that we mix into the color, the less saturated it is, all right? So that medium tone value color though is uh, very important because I think that when we start to look at some of these greens, all right, depending upon what we put next to them, and that has to do with value, all right? And has to do with temperature, uh, we can uh, we can make these uh, these colors sing together, all right. And I think the um, thing that I want you to recognize is that we mix a little yellow into these colors. They uni that unifies the color, but also it makes it uh, work in relationship to the other colors. And I feel that this is one of the things that's real important. So you see that combination there. But let me say this. This combination, where we're mixing the um, the orange, the, the uh, red, and the and the yellow, say with a with a, a black, all right, is a great combination for making a tree because the yellow black never gets really that light, all right. And I think that what happens with that 
is that when you look at these colors, you're going to see that they're close in value, but they change in temperature. And actually, that's the best combination to paint a tree with. All right. So I hope this helped you to, today. Uh, obviously, there are many different blues, many different yellows. All right. They all mix differently. You get different greens. All right. Uh, the other the other thing is that, you know, using the orange kind of dulls the, the green, but it also creates creates a kind of vibration between the yellow and the orange. And then adding the red actually darkens the green and dulls it even more. But uh, it will actually make uh, for a good combination, uh, especially when you're painting like foliage and things like that. I always start with use, making my greens with black and yellow first and then seeing what I can do afterwards, all right? I hope that helped you. I, I think that right now I, I feel we um, have pretty well covered what the, it would be to mix these greens and, uh, and how you would use them in your painting, all right? So with that, I'm gonna say uh, thank you for listening and we'll, uh, uh, if you have any questions, just let me know, all right? Uh, thank you, bye.